Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life. Whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm excited to bring back an episode that's been one of our favorites. And today we're gonna talk about sexual yoga, performance hacking your sexual experiences, and gorilla tantra. So this is an incredible episode where we talk about bringing flow states into the bedroom. And Jamie Wheel has been working with top athletes, uh, government officials, people in finance and technology to really bring and accelerate flow states. And in this conversation, he basically said, I only, I only want to talk, I only want to do this conversation if it's something new. And so he was really excited to have this conversation about how to bring flow states into the bedroom. So some of the things you can look out for in this episode, he describes something called the cosmic fuck tunnel. He talks about why sex after eight o'clock is not a good idea and other things that can arouse or dull your arousal potential. He talks about a revolutionary alternative for men rather than leaving a relationship for a younger partner or blaming someone else for not feeling vital or turned on. He talks about what he calls his paint by number guide to integrating flow states into your sexual relationships and expanded consciousness. And he also talks about what it takes to be mature enough to take on this practice. So enjoy this episode. Jamie is a master of flow states and you know, has written books and researched and I'll give you his background, but I was thinking, oh, we're going to come in and we're going to talk about, you know, flow states for success and happiness, which, which is part of what we're going to talk about. But uh, Jamie informed me that what he really wants to talk about today is Gorilla Tantra and the sexual yoga of becoming. So I am thrilled to dive into this topic and um, yeah, I don't know where this is going to go, but that's more exciting to me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So Jamie has um, co-authored the global bestseller, Stealing Fire, which he just informed me was nominated for a Pulitzer. So congratulations for that. Thank you. And he's the executive director at Flow Genome Project, is an expert on peak performance and leadership, and specializes in the neuroscience and application of flow states. Jamie has advised everyone from the U.S. Naval War College and Special Operations Command to the athletes of Red Bull, the owners of the NFL, NBA, MLB, Premier League teams, to the executives of Google, Deloitte, Cisco, Young Presidents Organization. So, you know, you've, you've had your hands, your mind, your heart, your wisdom, right? Like in with the best of the best. Sure. Yeah. It's been, it's been, uh, it's been a fascinating, fascinating survey of yeah. just the top performance in a bunch of different domains yes. and just getting to see that, you know, at, when people are in the top, I don't know what you'd say, maybe 5%, mm -hmm. they are interested in performance gains of one to 3%, like that's yeah. material to them. So right. the degree of kind of scrutiny that they're all placing on what's next for themselves as individual leaders or what's next for as a team or an organization, yeah. it's pretty fine grained and it's, it's, there are always fun conversations to have. 
Yeah, right. And, you know, as we were starting, you said like, let's, okay, I'm in for this as long as we're having a new conversation. So I just want to guide you to, is it the Flow Genome Project website? Mm -hmm. So, you know, anything you want to know about flow and flow states and all the research Jamie's done, go there. And we're going to take it from there and go into this topic of Gorilla Tantra and sexual yoga of becoming. And I mean, why don't we start actually with um, give me and us a little bit of a sense of what, what you're actually talking about. I've never actually heard of Gorilla Tantra. So no, no, it's a, it's a TM patent pending. Um, so, uh, the, the idea here, I mean, just, just to walk it all back, it, this is actually completely congruent with the work of the flow genome project and, you know, performance hacking, et cetera, et cetera. It's just that most people tend to think of human sexuality in terms of, eroticism or mm-hmm. romance or both some kind of combination of those two things meaning the romance and you know do i love you do i have feelings for you and mm-hmm. i might project a whole bunch of other stuff on top of you as well but yep. fundamentally me and you uh and then the eroticism whether that's just kind of physical carnal drive the kind of lust elements or whether that's aesthetics etc cetera, etc cetera. so some form of the actual just kind of magnetism or attraction and then as a result it gets fully enculturated So there's all kinds of meaning making and significance we assign to sexuality and, you know, that that really doesn't have anything to do with the physiological functioning of it. Yes. Um, So, so if you, if we walk it all back and you're like, wow, you know, this is just, this is the evolutionary imperative. It's that powerful. Um, it sex has, as the evolutionary imperative yeah, straight up we all got here that way uh, yep. as as did most of the universe mm-hmm. you know? and, and you know you go into hindu mythology or, or or a lot of native american mythologies and you know cosmology began surprise surprise with a big old fuck you know as as did <laughs> that's a good way to put it you know so so um so the first thought is just to say, well, um, two things. One, it, one is to realize that it's a wildly potent force, yes. very hard to control. Therefore, it makes total sense that pretty much every society for time immemorial has sought to corral it, uh-huh. control it, contain it, direct it, um, and did so with taboos, sanctionings, endorsements, et cetera. So just, to, just you know, yeah. we don't have time to like... Un- right, we don't have time to go there, but it is really interesting to even just pause with that thought of like, wow, it is so powerful. Yeah, super crazy powerful. And as a result, there's an awful lot of additional cultural and psychological baggage dumped on top of it. Mm-hmm. Now that, that, gives us, that gives us two things. One, one is, is also um, what's possible because it's, because it's the evolutionary imperative, like good old mother nature through the kitchen sink at us to ensure we keep doing it yes right and so that's where you get into the flow and the performance hacking side which is there's this you know potent cascade of neurochemistry of reinforcers of pleasure and learning and you know and 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 habit forming um neurochemicals that Mm -hmm. show up in those states ranging from dopamine and endorphins to oxytocin and serotonin to Mm -hmm. you know all of these things and once you realize that you're like oh wow that's the mother load of neurochemical priming Like that is literally the strongest thing we are ever incented to do outside of eating. Wow. And, and and therefore if you can get under the hood of it and you can learn to tinker with it, right. You have very powerful state of consciousness hacks. Yes. Arguably the most potent you can ever get your mitts on. Um, And state of consciousness hacks you're saying through sex or during sex. Yeah. Like learning, like a decouple it from all the cultural baggage. Yeah. Realize that fundamentally we are neocortexes, you know, connected to spinal columns, connected to erogenous zones. Uh And you're like, Oh wow. We can learn to play and tune uh, our own instruments, the instruments of our lovers and partners Mm. with, with the intention of precipitating wild ass, super interesting states of consciousness. And Uh then you, point those wherever wherever you want that to me is super interesting right and, and you know it just strikes me just to to pause here for a moment to say a lot of people are having a kind of sex where it's just well a lot of people are not having as much sex as they want a lot of people are dissatisfied with their sex a lot of people haven't necessarily at least you know people who have come to me and work with me and you know the people I've met out in the world, well, a lot of people aren't talking about sex. And, um, you know, I don't think in general, there is a sense of what you're saying, that sex is kind of this, this doorway, this um, rocket fuel 
for different states of consciousness. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I've been in a lifelong relationship with my partner. And so as a result, you know, in varying points in time, we kind of came across a book on Tantra, like Margo Anon's, you know, mm-hmm. Art of Sexual Ecstasy or yep. something like that. And you, you, I read those sons of bitches and I, and, you know, I get through like the second chapter. And it would be yes. like, and here's the part where the man wraps himself in veils and comes prancing into the bedroom and takes off his clothes <laughs> as a strip tease and don't forget the incense. And it's like, fuck that noise. Like, not going to happen. Right. So, so, so when anything resembling, or, or even, I mean, you know, friends of mine that were like comparative religious scholars and they'd be like, hey, here's some badass Tibetan Buddha, Buddhist OG Tantra. Like check out this PhD dissertation or something. Yeah. And I would, I mean, I honest to God remember doing this over a Christmas holiday. I was like, I read that thing for like a day and a half, like Mm -hmm. just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and being like, where the hell's the goods? Where's the actual instructions? For achieving these states of consciousness. Yes, just like, give me the paint by numbers. Yes. Let's do it, right? And and I never got there. What what I realized is no sooner did you start getting into like the how-to's, then you got into these elaborate cosmologies and then you have to recite these words or these languages right. this day or this, that, and the other. And it just became so Baroque, you know, just so complex and, yes. unique, and therefore unverifiable. Yes. You're like, really? Really? I, so on the one hand, you know, what does make sense to me about this is that, uh, let me see how to say this, right? In order to, I think, achieve certain states of consciousness, you have to be open to states of consciousness right or so i my sense is that maybe in all of that you know barrage of whether it's the the veils or the the dances or the the you know the prayers or whatever i just wonder if that's why that's in there however that doesn't make it very approachable for the the general public yeah i mean i mean you could absolutely say there are some super valuable profoundly meaningful caveats allegories you know checks and balances baked in for sure Mm -hmm. um and we never kept practicing and we were interested, you know, right. so, so like the net result, at least for a 21st century, you know, uh, a sort of Western householder was yeah, is, kept on driving. Yes. Um, but, but nonetheless, right. If, if you, if you back it all up and you're like, okay, evolution, super strong imperative, mm-hmm. mother nature, kitchen sink and incenting this, this behavior with a ton of very positive neurophysiological responses. Yep. Right. Um, including everything from attraction to arousal to orgasm and release, et cetera. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And then you also even think, um, how did we get to be clever monkeys? Like what, you know, like Yuval Harari, who wrote that book, Sapiens and mm-hmm. Homo Deus, you know, one of his questions was, how did we become human? How did we go from Homo erectus and Neanderthals and all these different, yeah. uh, like, you know, Homo, Homo species? Like there was a bunch of them. I mean, that was the mind blower. That book was like, there were seven different species all living on this planet at the same time. How did Homo sapiens become the ape who knows? Right. Right. And you could say it was because, um, you know, arguably one of the defining characteristics of humanity that's pretty darn unique in the entire animal kingdom is we have prolonged extended sex outside of estrus, outside Mm -hmm. of mating time. Uh And and if you then couple that, because, you know, like Terrence McKenna had that stoned ape hypothesis. He's like, oh, well, the reason we went from dumb, dumb cave dwellers into smart apes is because we were herders and, you know, and mushrooms grow on, you know, herding uh-huh. or on, on cow shit. Ergo, we ate the mushrooms. Ergo, that's why we're smart. And you're like, well, that's just such a tenuous strain of logic. Yes. But the reality is, is that, you know, humans got busy and, you know, beyond bonobos, beyond I mean, chimpanzees, average copulation is six seconds. We are wow. 90% genetically identical, you know, uh, lions, animals. I mean, other animals mate and, and the actual act of sex is painful. It's dangerous. And yeah. It's free. Yeah. So wow. to, have, to have a species where it can be pleasurable, extended, mm-hmm. right? And arguably, and, and particularly when you get into the neurochemistry of it, it leaves yeah. us with feelings of safety. Yes. Right. Security, belonging, attachment. You're like, holy shit. Okay. okay. This might well wow. The thing. And, and then the ability to repeat as often as you want or I right. can imagine. Then you're like, wow, is that the neurochemical shift that kind of brought that extra 3% of our DNA? Right. So, um, okay. So are you, can we, can we go to what's possible? Does that feel like a place that we could jump yeah. to? Or, we, we, can, we can jump there if you want. We're going to be skipping a few steps. I, but, well, and then come back. Cause I think I want to, I think where I'm, 
going in this is like, all right, well, what even is possible so that then we know how we're getting there? Like, what have you experienced? For sure. So what is possible is a dedicated practice with a partner or partners it, like the notion of relationship formats and structures we yeah. can is it relevant well no i mean it's super relevant in the sense of do you get through the garden gate or not and huh. so i will just put a shout out for dudes as you can't do this with more than one person until you've figured out how to do it with, with one, one person great okay so, right so so we'll, so we'll let that be for now yep. um but i mean what it can end up being is a psychedelic shamanic visionary practice where you can mend all of your trauma and gain you know cosmic level meditative insights um and access to kind of like the galactic magic eight ball so it's through sort of, the sexual experience yeah it's pretty much an unfair competitive advantage um, yeah i would say it's super, it's super fucking fun you know no doubt so so that's absolutely what's possible you can and and when when we have basically run folks through even the basic protocols um of this they're like oh shit this is like that time i tried 5 meo dmt uh-huh. like, huh? yeah exactly wow. so so you actually have a protocol for this at this <clears> point Oh yeah, we have all sorts of protocols. Um, so, it, and it truly is paint by numbers. It's like the whole point is like you don't ever have to talk about your fucking feelings again. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You can literally just learn to work it out. Just work it out. And so back to- Work it out through your body. Through work your- it out through your body. Work it out through your somatic system. Work mm-hmm. it out through the neurochemical process. Mm-hmm. So basically it becomes like <clears throat> Lego block, like Kundalini Lego blocks. Huh. And you can just snap them together in sequence and really just think of, again, if you if you- de-eroticize, de-romanticize, and even de-socialize sexuality as a set of behaviors, functions, or practice. And you're just like, this is just stuff humans can do. Right. Which reminds me of your, we don't have to go there because everybody can, you know, watch your, your talks and everything, but right. But of really looking at our egos or the, the possibility that we've been, um, you know, trying to navigate life with a driver that hasn't necessarily been able to get us where we want to go or need to go and, and your analogy of this this dashboard right mm-hmm. that yeah. we're you know that yes. yeah exactly so the notion of a dashboard you can live up when you can kick it up on the dashboard instead of down sucked into your stories and by the way one of the apps you can be running is the neurosomatics of full spectrum sexuality and you're like okay so now it back to that notion of like lego blocks and you can snap things together you're like okay um if we basically see sexual arousal um, and release as just like, it's like an EMP. It's like an electromagnetic pulse to our nervous mm-hmm. systems. So it builds up energy and then, zoop, poof, right? And levels it out. And so in, in the French, you call it la petite mort, the little death, the right? Little death, right? So there's, all these, there's all these moments of basically nervous system down regulation. Uh-huh. And in a time when we're all just fibrillating, like super stressed out, our social feeds have gone ape shit, right? Yeah. The news around the world is crazy, work, traffic, you know, stimulation. We're all in a state of perpetual quasi arousal, like yeah. distress. But right, not, uh, right. Not the distress kind stress. of arousal. Right, not you stress, not positive and healthy stress that mm-hmm. makes us stronger, just distress, just fibrillating noise that is just depleting us. Yes. So what sexuality can be viewed of, at least in particularly in this day and age, is a way to both is to increase the use stress, right? Mm-hmm. The positive arousal in our system and then whoosh, drop it out entirely. And leave us increase the use stress and yeah. then release the stress from our system. And then release it cleanly. And mm-hmm. so it can pulse through our entire nervous system and leave us level set. So so you can use it as a form of very deliberate trauma release. Because right, mm-hmm. I mean unmetabolized stress becomes post-traumatic stress. Right. Right. You know, so so we end up with an accumulation, like if we can't deal with it in real time, yeah. you know, backlogging in our nervous systems, our psychology, our relationships, et cetera. Yeah. So just thinking of it in that way, you're like, oh, that's kind of neat. That's, that's yeah. neat. So like step one would be like sexuality as a tool, sexuality mm-hmm. as practice, not sexuality mm-hmm. as exclamation point on a great day, right. not sexuality as bargaining chip for power in a relationship, not any of the lower level ways that people use it. So like step one would be thinking of it as a bio, neurobiological tool. Step two is like committing to it as a practice. We show up and train every day together. 
whether we whether we want to whether or not. we want to or not right i mean which actually how beautiful is that for couples who've been together for a long time who feel that there's this need to have to come with you know not come as an orgasm but <laughs> like come toward each other having mm. all of this arousal already no actually as a practice it's you know come together as you are and practice bow, bow under the mat yeah. just bow under the goddamn mat i do not wait to see if my pearly whites are shining back at me to decide to floss my teeth at night. Right, right. right? You do it because you're like, I'd like to keep my chumpers for another few decades, right? Mm -hmm. So so the idea of like, and, and that alone is a huge psychological thing. And of course, when couples get in rough straits, what do they do? The first thing to go, because sex has exclamation point, there's nothing right. to exclaim, there's no yeah. celebration. So we're yeah. not doing it for that reason. And there's sex is bargaining to your poor tool. And someone, often a woman, is withholding right? As a way to communicate. Sometimes women, sometimes men, right? We don't have to get into that necessarily, right? But it is like one person in the couple usually is using it in that way or withholding. Yeah. And yes, absolutely. And so what you end up with, is you end up with a death spiral. And then the only thing left is like couples therapy. And you're like, mm -hmm. dear God, like now we've just cut off all new energy into the system. Yes. We're now quibbling over the table scraps. Yeah. You know, which is a which is a downward spiral versus commit to the practice, mm. put gas in the tank, whether we like each other or not. Right. Which now makes sense to me, right? Where you're talking about the sexual yoga of becoming, right? That there's this yoga of sex as opposed to, like you're saying, sex for the exclamation point. Yeah. And and then you basically you're like, okay, so now in the notion that it's modular and configurable. I mean, I don't this is not like the actual experience is very organic. It's, it can be totally romantic. It can be profoundly relational. Great. Okay. So that's interesting too, right? It's not this kind of scientific, like you said, paint by number. There's there's actual human experience there and massive and delight. Yeah. yeah. Massive amounts of human experience and um, no, no, no need to believe anything a priori. Yes. Uh, you can just you can go try to it out. these experiments. Yeah. And, and so like, if you do that, then I'm a big fan of like, let the mystery stay the mystery. Like there's yes. no need to prejudge or prewire or, or over promise what's, what's on the other side of any given experiment. It's much more, it's much cleaner just to be like, here's, here, try this. here's the rationale. Here's the, here's a research or a credible reason why you'd even want to try. Mm -hmm. um, here's the instructions, go conduct this experiment, see what happens for you. <laughs> if it's valuable, um, you'll keep doing it. And if it's not, the less we've spoken of it, the better. Yes. And, and, and if you come up with your own content that needs deep debriefing or integrating, awesome. Now mm -hmm. you've got your own data set. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just generally, I think, you know, it, it preserves more people's autonomy versus getting all hopped up and chasing some new blinky shiny thing. Right. Some new right. high, some new promise, some new something. Yeah. But I mean, but, but I mean, the realities are is like combining if so, so now back to that notion of Lego blocks, you're, you're like, oh, okay, so there are no skipping steps, yeah. right? And, and, and so in, in human unfolding, it's like, oh, my physical level of not just fitness, but openness, right? I mean, what yeah. is my spinal mobility? What is my pelvic openness? Like if I have tight hip flexors and an inability and I sit too long and all those kinds of things and I spend all my time not moving. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm not going to be able to connect yes. in a meaningful way. Right, mm -hmm. I won't have any kind of vitality move through and circulate through my system. In fact, yeah. I think I just saw Ben Greenfield's bit on that he talked with you, and it was just about sitting, constricting blood vessels. Yep. So even on a purely mechanical level, right, you're not going to be on top of your game yes. if you're not engaging in good full range physical movement. And fundamentally, I mean, it's particularly spines and pelvises. Right. Okay. And okay. So I know our time is short. I know you don't have a lot of time. So what, what feels most exciting to convey for you and what's new, right? Like, is, is this new? Have we, have we accomplished your goal of talking about something new or are you giving us the background and we haven't gotten to, to yeah, I mean, this, this was all wind up for the actual kind That's of, what I thought. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the idea would be is that like, if, yeah, if you, if you realize, um, you're like, okay, so, so you can combine yes. sexuality, practice, and arousal with a host of additional beneficial projects yes. for optimizing yourself. Mm -hmm. So start with your physical movement, right? And get multi-planar, open joint, like full range of motion going. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And add 
respiratory practice? Can you actually breathe and circulate, um, you know, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen in a skillful way? And anybody who's been doing Wim Hof breathing or any of those kind of things, or has tried a holotropic breathing workshop, yeah. you dip your toe into varying aspects of that. Um, relational practice is, does your partner feel known, seen, trusted, safe, right? Is there, is there real time communication as you guys potentially enter mm-hmm. different domain, mm-hmm. you know? And, and, and Which that- is so rare. It's so, it just pains me to say how rare it is that people actually feel known, seen, heard, understood in partnership. Yeah. 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 And I mean, even just to the, even just to the basics of just, you know, safety, like rock climbing, you're like, yeah. you know, as you're not tight and are you on belay? Yes. You're in climb. Go ahead. I've got you. Right. Are you on the same team? Right. Versus yeah. all of that. Yeah. Which, which, you know, which circles back to the notion of, Hey, like practice this um, with a single partner first, simply yes. because you don't get any place meaningful or interesting, constantly swapping um, right. down, down at the bottom of the, at the bottom of the mountain. Yeah. Uh, but once you know, I mean, then one, once you learn, then you can be a hopeful ambassador for good things. Yeah. Um, but you then realize, Oh, so any, and then take, um, even take sort of conscious kink, right? I mean, you realize, Oh, pleasure pain can be swapped out, uh, and mm-hmm. mapped to arousal cycles, which increase, neurochemistry you combine um varying combinations and again this is in the context you know prerequisite absolutely high. these are all prerequisites high trust container no one is pulling fast ones on anybody else this is not and this is not pickup artists appropriating nlp this is not any of that (laughs) just was like right what's the list you're gonna use pick up artists right any of those those yeah. ways to debunk or to try to manipulate, right? This is based yeah. in deep trust and care and love. And I mean, those concepts could all be yeah, created or, sure. or understood in different ways too. But, but what I'm getting is, right, this foundation of, you know, a partner with whom you are uh, heading in the same direction, on the same path, wanting good for each other. 100%. 100%. Uh, and, and then you realize, okay, if we are able to, I mean, fundamentally, right. I mean, most of, most of Tantra East and West has basically been, you know, delay or avoid male ejaculation for as long as possible. Interesting. While having sex for as long as possible. Uh Everything else is sort of details, you know, it's like additional different bells and whistles and culture. Uh So you're like, okay, so try that. Right. Just, try, you know, and you can throw in, you know, orgasmic meditation or some other sensitizing, preparing mm. practice. To open and be able to feel more and conduct more energy through your body and all of that. Yeah. So, so, so start there, mm-hmm. right. Start, start with deep attention to a woman partner. If a woman partner's in the mix, mm-hmm. um, extend and prolong, you know, nice, connected, heartfelt, uh, sexual encounter mm-hmm. through the range of arousal and, and peak and climax. Mm-hmm. Consider adding in any form of intensify. So there's a whole range of like sexuality, you know, tools, not toys. I and mean, everybody, if you just look into your kitchen and you see these thousands of dollars spent on the off chance, someone might actually cook a real meal in that right. room. <laughs> right. Like this. So, so, but you know, and so sexuality, it would, it would make sense that we would invest in uh, at toys, least some tools, some, some form of quality mm-hmm. tools, um, mm-hmm. you know, good vibrations, which is in, up in your area, like a yeah. woman owned sex positive, highly educational mm-hmm. story, you know, wants to kind of still steer, understandably steer well clear of kind of trench coats and yes. brown paper, wrapping paper, right? There's, there's, there's high quality positive yeah. places to learn and, and find tools and practices. Okay. And that, you're saying we're, these are all still, we're still in the prerequisite realm. Like we haven't gotten prerequisite. to no, no. the gorilla. I mean, the actual, the actual source code would be like, okay, super funky ass beats, quiet, dark room, good candles, vibe it out, safe, uninterrupted space, uh-huh. orgasmic meditation for 15 minutes, uh, bring the one, this is all cis het, blah, blah, blah. Um, um, right. Well, you can do orgasmic meditation with a man or on a penis as well. So yes, either way, whatever gender, yeah. whatever sex you're having, you can do this. 
Yep. Um, and, and then you can add in um, anything resembling um, like a Neros is a prostate massager for a man. Mm -hmm. Nipple clamps connect the nipples to the clitoral nerve for the woman. Any kind of um, plugs to bring in the vagus nerve and the pelvic floor. And then you can play with uh, any kind of um, you know, basically just edging edging practices mm -hmm. to a climax Staying close to climax but not going over the yeah. edge and then saying. in conjunction with breathing practices in mm -hmm. conjunction with spinal mobility and pelvic movement practices you can even use like props and bolsters uh -huh. right if you open uh -huh. up the heart and back with it with a roller underneath your shoulder blades whatever right i mean yep. that's what i meant about the lego block thing yes like yes any set of protocols that are good for you and or fun and or mm -hmm. embodied you can pretty much combine with arousal and release yes and they get that much more interesting and yes. you can even combine this with you know in in places where you're allowed um you can add in uh, cannabis, you can add in nitrous oxide and oxygen. You can add in a combination of both respiratory state consciousness shifting as well as neurochemical state shifting. And before you know it, you've got norepinephrine, dopamine, you know, oxytocin, serotonin, anandamide from the cannabinoids. You basically have just reverse engineered uh -huh. flow state or a peak ecstatic state. And then you can, particularly with breathing protocols, we do a 53.1, so 50 hyperventilations, mm. which you do as you're edging. So that blows off CO2 and reduces your desire to breathe. Uh -huh. Then three inhalations of pure sports oxygen, uh -huh. right? And then one deep inhalation of nitrous oxide. Uh -huh. And time that with maximum pain because your, your pain threshold goes up. Uh -huh. Nitrous uh -huh. oxide is used by doulas. It's used by you know, midwives and all those kind of things from mothers delivering children as well as the happy dentist. Yes. Right? Um, and in conjunction again with cannabinoids, with arousal, et cetera, where allowed, um, you then do the 50, then the three sports auctions. So you've got low CO2, maximum saturation with your oxygen, and then one um, one lungful of nitrous oxide and then time that with edge play, maximum peak pain, pleasure and climax. And you hold your breath as long as you possibly can while you're climaxing. Uh -huh. And, and um, that's kind of the ball game. Okay. Um, so that's the paint by number that you just said, that, like, like conduct that, see what happens. But now that is be, you know, like, like it typically shows you, um, two things it will if you if you are clear like if you've done the rest of your integration and work um, and, and William James I mean back in the 19th century was doing this and he's like oh it was amazing you get shown <laughs> meaning of the universe you just don't remember it when you come back <laughs> right. right but I mean, it birthed the entire field of comparative religion it was what inspired him to write varieties of religious experience his seminal book on the subjects like I mean it's what got him started mm -hmm. um, but the realities were is, you know, part of the reason is A, he came back and didn't have the language for it. And B, he didn't have the embodiment to hold it. So now Right, which goes back to all the other building blocks like you were saying. Yeah. So in this day and age, we have it. the language and we have the ability to be much more integrated and, and embodied. And if so, you can come back with kind of quicksilver from the other realm that you've just visited. Yeah. Do you and, have personal examples of what quicksilver you've brought back? Yeah, well, I mean, pretty much the entire thing, including the self-disclosing nature of this practice itself. So it taught us what was next, which is bizarre. Um, meaning? But, meaning literally like, hey, here's how this works. Oh, here's a vital respiration workshop. Like, here's what it would look like. And here's the progression from like static apnea breath hold with a pulse oximeter to Navy SEAL box breathing to freehold diving protocols. Uh -huh. So you were shown... Breathing. To, ga to, to gas assisted breathing, to, to gas blended assisted breathing to the end. And oh, by the way, that should run about 60 to 90 minutes and you can call it the vital respiration workshop. Wow. Like, oh shit. Wow. That's fucking fascinating. That's what I mean about like the, the, the galactic magic eight ball. So yeah. like it is, but, but here's the thing. It, this is, there is an interior logic to it and it appears and beats me why I don't presume to like assert the, the meta meanings here, but it appears to be self-governing. It tends to show you both what every, the world of infinite possibility and also exactly where you're broken. Mm. 
Mm. And, and it feels like, and, and we loosely, like we loosely turn, you know, the, the breath hold as you travel, we've playfully called like the cosmic fuck tunnel because it just, that's what it is. I mean, until we come up with a more technical name. That's I our, like it. That's our working title. <laughs> and, and, um, and what it appears to reveal is something resembling like the bliss fuck crucifixion. So you increase the pleasure, increase the pleasure, and you can, you know, you understand all the knobs and levers. So you're like, yes. okay, this would work. This ought to, we should try this. What about, what about that combination? They all work amazingly. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, so we, we, and then that gets you to the la petite mort, the little death. Uh-huh. So it is this winking out of all preference, pleasure, pain, stories, all of it. Uh-huh. And the crucifixion part is just the, oh dear God, I am here 100% alive, yes. filled with gratitude and torn open, open. Mm-hmm. torn open with the, with the heart-wrenching beauty yes. of being alive. Being alive. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it feels like the game is if you go home and do your homework, if you yes. do what you've been shown, then you get to level up the next time. Yes. And, and, I, and if you don't, then you enter the hell realms in a hurry. Well, and that's kind of what I was actually just going to go to. And I know we need to end soon, but you know, my, my personal question that I've been kind of wondering about lately is being a mom, running a business, all of these things, right? Like, does this last for you? Do you get to, do, do the benefits come from the bedroom into the rest of your life? Are you finding that? I mean, it is, it is, it is a central practice. It is the wellspring of magic and meaning in our life. And it, Beautiful. it, it forms everything from parenting to creative projects in the world to like bizarrely tactical stuff like, Oh, here's a kick ass marketing strategy. Holy shit. Never thought of that. Um, to, yeah. I mean, it, like I said, I mean, it, it, in, in many respects, it feels like, and, and, by, and you know, it, it can sound like utterly debauched. You're like, Oh my God, I cannot believe, right. If someone is like swinging from the chandeliers in that fashion, that is, that's out of hand. And then, but then you realize it's also like incredibly squeaky clean um, and, and positively wholesome. Cause you're like, well, there's a, there's no need to go state chasing in any less effective way. Like, why would I casually drink? Why would I habitually like be a stoner? Why would I be on pills or your psychedelics or like, why would I do anything other than save my entire week for like, Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you become super clear and then like the no skipping steps, you're like all my body work. Suddenly I'm training my ass off. Right. Suddenly you're doing all of those steps and all of those building blocks to actually make this happen. All the building blocks because the more you prep, the higher you go and the more you retain. So it suddenly becomes a very, literally it's just the final capstone building block on an integral practice. So so Uh now Uh there's an amazing positive reward, which is ta-da, like most people aren't like, wow, I've just done push-ups for a whole week and there's some incredible <laughs> neck snapping white light experience, right? right? But if you, if you train in this fashion and it's just the culmination of a whole stack, as I said, diet, movement, respiration, relationship, you know, financial practice, you know, getting my work done at, getting my stuff done at work. Right. Like, so I'm free and clear, right? All of it. And, and then you realize, um, that in, in many respects, it just, and, and, and then even the, um, the notion of like the sexuality, because again, people can't help but be like, whoa, the only people I've heard about that's like cooked up Russian strippers in Vegas and like something really weird. You're like, yes, mm-hmm. right. No, and I love that you're bringing this actually into a possibility for the mainstream. Yeah, like, like, and the reality is, is because most people are so repressed about this stuff that they only act out out of compulsion, perversion, et cetera. So you're like, whoa, well, if that's like two or three of those things and you're talking about doing seven or eight of these things, then uh-huh. that must be super unconscious or uh-huh. super or super compulsive. And it's like, it's the exact and opposite. It's not. And, and, and then the reality is, is you can't do this casually. So it, you, so it also becomes this ridiculous backdoor into lifelong um, partnership and sacred union. So you're like, oh my God. So this notion of like midlife couples being like, hey, you know, that the thrill is gone. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's, over. it's like, yeah, of course it is. But like, holy shit, you could be beginning to practice this thing where it even ceases to be about our quote unquote sex life. Yes. It's literally how two caring humans connect their 
prefrontal cortexes and their spinal columns and yeah. circulate tons of energy and take turns slingshotting each other to the back of beyond, right. which is endlessly magical, mysterious, and fascinating. And by the way, gives you all the source code to then go back and you can use it. Like if you've, if, you know, you've seen the MDMA PTSD studies where they're like yeah. taking a pharmaceutical safety, security, belonging, and then going back and revisiting stress mm -hmm. and releasing it that they haven't been able to do any other way. You can take this sexual protocol, does exactly the same things on the neurochemical level, and then go back and do guided revisiting and excavation yes. of trauma, of places you've hurt each other, of anything, or, or places you were hurt before you even yeah. found that practice partner. So, okay, I think this is amazing, fantastic, magical. Like you said, I think it can rewire our ideas of that midlife relationship or, you know, relationship going downhill. And I imagine for one listening, right, it's like, wow, that is uh, in a way like you just gave me a rocket ship. And I haven't totally figured out necessarily how to put fuel in the rocket or drive it or direct it or so so let's just end with where would you start right do you have this paint by number mm -hmm. guide how do you how yeah do you, i mean, I mean, I mean starts? you know it's certainly like where we're relevant is like somebody's already in a dedicated relationship and that does not mean till death do we part it just right. means we're on belay and it could be for a long weekend. It could be for a summer fling. It could be whatever, but it's committed. I'm not just going to leave you mid route. Right. So or even I was going to say mid route or even after, but after is probably what you're referring to mid route. Like that, you know, there's, there's the follow up or there's the, right. The impact mm -hmm. that happens after that experience in that one moment per se. Yeah, absolutely. And, but I mean, like in, in the de-romanticizing, right, that there's this thing where like now suddenly my attraction to my partner A is neurochemical, like you mm -hmm. can just dial it and it can become wildly powerful. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to mean that someone we finally have resolved who, who does the dishes on Tuesday nights. Right. Like, it's so different than that. Um, and, then, and then it becomes um, literally what are the domains we get to together. So yeah. it's, it ceases to become egoic. It ceases to become my, are you meeting my projected needs or not, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. But as far as, as, far as the, the beginnings, I mean, the first is obviously self-bodily knowledge. So even if somebody's not in a relationship at that time, they can begin practicing and understanding their yes. arousal and their movement. And it's just kind of Taoist 101, right? I yeah. mean, the more alive, the, I mean, this is true for for men in midlife with dropping testosterone, uh, prostatic understanding, pelvic understanding and control, true yes. for women in two, both, you know, I mean, perimenopause kicks in at what, 30, 33? Like, and it's just kind of a variation from there. So like- yeah. the Everybody's more, different. But right, but right, yeah. I mean, I love working with men on that sense of getting to know their own bodies, their own psyches, their own arousal, their how emotions are connected to arousal. I mean, all of that, right? Like you're saying, I mean, these are the first- steps in this yeah. process. And, and, and many men, right? I mean, two things I'll leave, you know, takeaways for you guys is that after 8 p.m. men's testosterone drops off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're in a longer term relationship and you're waiting until 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night and you've had a beer or two, right? All those kind of things you're saying, I'm just not feeling it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Right? The answer, of course you're not. Right. And the other is that, you know, mid forties, men's testosterone count tends to drop, particularly if they're inactive, sedentary knowledge workers. And what is the surest fire way to boost testosterone that many men tragically do run off with a young new mate right. that actually does spike testosterone. And so yeah. if a guy's like, I've just lost that sense of life, I'm just phoning it in. I don't know what's different. And then, Ooh, little Susie Q, my secretary suddenly makes me feel alive. I'm willing to destroy you know, 20 years of something yeah. really useful because I don't know how to rekindle the honeymoon phase. Right. My primary. You're like, oh, that's tragic. You got, there's definitely a simpler, better way. And it's not to like somehow halfway our way back to mm -hmm. what was kind of good enough to start. It's like, no, no, there's an entire additional chapter or entire another book that you can dive into. And it's pretty limitless. Okay, right. So, I mean, that is that is revolutionary, right? To talk about that right now, what seems like the only option sometimes for a man who's getting older and has lost his testosterone or sense of attraction or whatever is to leave for the younger woman, that this is actually a pathway back 
or even beyond, like you said, to where he started. Yeah, way beyond. And it completely decouples, again, all of the romantic egoic stuff of like, I'm not feeling alive, therefore it's your fault. Right. Right. I'm not attracting. Yes, right on, right on. Right. And instead it becomes, wow, we are practice partners and we can intensify the polarity at a neurochemical level. So it's kind of like, I mean, evolution is amoral, right? It tricks us into the sack, doesn't care with whom, whether it fits our social structures, preferred relational formats, emotional, psychological, personal needs, et cetera. It just wants to just spread the gene pool. And it's played a number of fast ones on this, including that male midlife crisis, you know, runoff with the secretary bit, right? Um, So we can turn it on its head and you can actually hack evolution back and you'd be like, I'm going to create the infatuation of romantic and love. I love it. I understand the knobs and levers and it doesn't stop there. I can also use it to access backdoor access yeah. the highest states of whatever, you know, whatever you'd yes. want to call it, adept conscious, adept awareness. Right. Um, okay. So this seems very hopeful for me, right? Especially for a man listening who's like, ugh, you know, I'm in my marriage and I'm, I'm, I just don't feel it anymore. I don't know where my aliveness is, all of this. Mm-hmm. And then back to right. First steps. I mean, we, we've gotten to some of the first steps Mm-hmm. around body awareness, emotional awareness, arousal awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and more important, just conduct the experiment. And we do like a 21-day intro course that's called Flow for Couples. And it's just basically, mm-hmm. it's actually right. just the screener for the more in-depth stuff. Because we're like, look, if you can't hang it together and practice for 21 days, then we yeah. sure as hell aren't teaching you the dynamite techniques. Yes, uh, That just wouldn't be safe or, or responsible. But the flip side is, is like, just conduct the experiment. We do like Freaky Fridays, like a date night, and those those thirty six questions to fall in love. Like you know, like yep. you do, do a dozen of those. One you know, like one dozen per week for the three weeks. Mm-hmm. Have the practices do daily owning. Do you know do do those things? Don't worry whether you have found that loving feeling or not. Don't worry what your psychology is uh-huh. Uh-huh. at all. Just commit to the practice. Just commit to doing it. Just commit all to the doing way it. Around. Yeah, just commit to doing it and fuck your lived experience. Don't even yeah. worry about it. Yeah. And I guarantee you that at the end of the 21 days, you will be feeling fundamentally different towards yeah. each other. Yeah. And right, and about your own sense of things. And and that is just that's just, I mean, that's that's the kind of easy way. Like no one has to talk about the feelings. Now the reality is you start moving that much juice between you as a couple. There are no skipping steps. You right, will you will start. You will have to and need to go through not just your current laundry list of grievances for each other, but if you're doing it right, it actually gets worse. Right. I was going to say, right, it'll bring up as you're starting to heal and release things from the past, from your body, from what you've been holding. So that's a whole, I mean, we could have a whole nother conversation about that, right? And how how to enter into that. But it sounds like what you're saying also is that this, you can continue using this practice to keep healing. And, you know, you may need some guidance, some support, some, you know, therapy, coaching, whatever along the way to actually make your way through all of this. Yeah, we always joke. I mean, we even said this to ourselves, which was like, you know, like literally like write in big magic marker and like put it on magnets on the fridge. Like, remember, colon, we did this on purpose. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> because once you conduct the experiment, I mean, everybody's a doubting Thomas. Everyone's like, yeah, really? Is this seriously going to work? And then at some point, like three weeks later, six weeks later, you're like, oh my God, you're like coming up for air, like gobsmacked. Like where the hell did we just go? Well, I think you're painting a, a, a good picture too, right? Of You can't really, I, I think, I'm curious what you think, but you know, you can't necessarily just open it up and have all the bliss and the beauty without actually having the shadow and the darkness. But yeah. you know, then there is a way of holding it. Like you said, we did this on purpose you know, I don't have to hold it that these places I'm going to that feel dark or that feel hopeless or any of whatever's coming up, that there's something wrong or bad there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I would say sometimes we need some help. Yeah. I mean, in the three ways this doesn't work out, right? And we can, we maybe can even end on this would be a distraction, i.e. how we start and then just some other blinky shiny thing comes across our path right. and we stop, right? Yeah. I mean, just super simple. Nothing really happens. Right. Yeah. Uh, addiction. Uh, we start out cynical that anything could rekindle the thing, and that's actually not the issue at all. Yeah. The issue is what the hell do you do when you can when when you've just lost your mind? Yes. And all you can think of because once you've hacked this, you're like, oh my god, there is nothing more fun. We are staying inside. We are canceling all of our appointments, and yes. I'm, playing, I'm playing hooky from school, uh-huh. right? Um, and then the final one is revulsion. 
mm. which is this has now brought something up in between us, in me, in you, that I cannot stand to look at. Uh-huh. And, I, and I pull the ripcord on the practice. Yeah. And so as long as you continue to lean into the pain, yeah. And as long as you continue to bow on to the mat, meaning we keep practicing no matter what, yeah. then you have safety. If, if, you, if you bail on the practice in the midst of the gnarly gnarly, yeah. then, you're, then you're in the wastelands. It's a, that's, that's not one I'd recommend. Yeah. Yeah. And as you say all of that, I just think, wow, okay, this in some ways seems so far beyond where some people are, right? Where some people are, you know, disrespecting each other, shaming, blaming, all of that stuff that happens in couples where, um, you know, there isn't a practice of consciousness or some might call it spiritual growth, some might call it relational growth. So, right, I mean, if that's not already a foundation in your relationship, as you said, if those building blocks are not in place, I could see this blowing things up in a very explosive, not necessarily in the good way, way, yeah, I mean, this is, this is absolutely dynamite. And that's the funny thing in this day and age of like info marketing and, and spiritual marketplace, everything is supposed to be the amazing game changing blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And the reality is, is that, I mean, this, you can, you can with high degree of confidence say this is the real deal, not because of anybody's patent pending something or other, but just because you're like, oh, like leveraging the yeah. entire evolutionary impulse to get it on. Yeah. Um, doing that with 21st century neuropsych yeah, that probably works. Yeah. And, and, and it, and it absolutely does. And so all your cautions, like the no skipping steps, yeah. right. Don't do stupid shit. Right. Right. Don't become an addict. Don't become a pervert. Mm-hmm. Don't manipulate or abuse the mm-hmm. power. Right. Don't, 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 right. don't use don't, the don't, power for good. Don't, yeah, use the, use the power for good. Don't succumb to magical thinking. Yeah. Right. Don't stare too long at the sun. Mm-hmm. Right. These things don't neglect your relational commitments. Don't mm-hmm. re- don't neglect your other commitments, your children, your work, your everything. Right? Yeah, like don't do stupid shit. Yeah. And and we all know what that stuff is. Yeah. Um, Which I love the way you're saying it. It's like right, you know, be an adult. Don't be, be a child in this be way. Be an adult. I mean, the idea of like Suzuki Roshi. You know, he said he said you'll find no reasonable men on the tops of great mountains. Mm. Right. So like when you're up there above, like above the cloud line and into the death zone where people aren't supposed to be like you mind your ropes and you check your anchors and you yeah. like, you realize we're in some, and like to say the, the sunrise from the top of Everest is the most stunning thing ever is true yeah. and it can kill you. Yeah. So right? both, both are, both are in the mix. And I would imagine Woo. that men listening to your podcast wouldn't actually want less than that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Maybe we can, maybe I can get you on here again after I go through the 21 days. We'll see if my, <laughs> I can work that out to go through the 21 days and then, then we can do another one of these and actually, you know, debrief from the other side. That would be amazing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Where can people find the 21 days? Is it on the Flow Genome Project? Is there a specific website? Yeah, I think it's just literally under, it's on flowgenomeproject.com. And if you just go to the train tab in the upper right, uh, it should pull down a list of classes you can, you can take online and great. in person with us. Awesome. So, Thank you so much for being here today. It's great to see you again. And uh, yeah, till next time. For sure. Be well. You too. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.